How's everybody? Oh, Just oh, cheese. Cheese. Good. I, my memory, I had to ask Zach to whack this up for me. So, did you get it? Okay, I'm going to explain this. At the bottom, there's a little icon. It looks like she got a set of headphones on a fireball. Click it. When it pops up, hit record. Drop it down, minimize it. We're good to go. Everybody understand that? Yeah. Now, we'll see if this works. Yeah. Let's see what I mean. You mess with one piece of technology, it don't like it. Perfect. All right, well, let's all stand. Let's get ready to worship Christ this morning. Amen. Amen. Amen.
good. Pray with me. Father God, we worship your name today in this place. Yeah. God, we lift your name high, Father. Thank you for being with us. You are worthy of our praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. It's good. I don't know if I'm on or not. Am I? Can you guys hear me? I really don't need a microphone, do I? I heard somebody say that. So. <laughs> a couple quick announcements. There we go. A couple quick announcements. Remember, we got our chili cook-off after service today, so we'll find out who wins the spinner trophy. We got second and third place medals in there as well. So after service, you want to go out to the family center. We'll have chili. Put your vote in for the winner, and it's going to be a fun time. Amen? Amen. Amen. There is also out there a family center. So when you leave, you will want to go that way. On the coat rack out there, there's some. There's a whole bunch of clothes out there. They are free. You can look through there. You can take what you want, and be sure to take it today because tomorrow they are going to go somewhere else to be given away. Okay. So check out the free clothing out there. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right, ladies' event is coming up October 31st or 30th? 30th. October 30th. The ladies are going to have an event. They're going to do some decorating. They're going to have some cookies and all that good kind of stuff. Some tote bags are in there. And all kinds of good stuff. So if you have a question, see Elizabeth. You can see Vicki as well. That's October 30th. At 2 o'clock. At 2 o'clock. Okay. Right, mark that on the calendar. And then trunk or treat, that'll be on a Saturday. This is the very next day on a Sunday. We have trunk or treat out here, October 31st, 6 to 8. Uh, that's when the town is going to be trick or treating. And we'll do our annual trunk or treat out here. There is a sign up board in the family center. So you'll want to take a look at that once again. Everybody needs to exit that way today. Um, Wednesday, Bible study, 7 o'clock, we'll be talking about some about the message that we're that we going to have today. You want to be there. Uh, adult Bible study, 7 o'clock. Kids club at 7 o'clock as well in the Family Center. Our offering box is in the back. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your offering and for your giving of tithes and offerings to the local church and your obedience to Jesus. We thank you for that. Uh, I said all that to finally get to this part. We got, we're going to do some MVPs today. Most valuable players. So we'll have, have uh, my wife come down. we got some more certificates that we're going to give out. We're going to, we want to honor our nursery ministry today. Got that? Okay. Our, our nursery ministry. Who in here enjoys that you're able to drop the youngins off at the nursery and you can come out here and you can have some adult time? Can I get an amen on that? I know those are little ones and, 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 and ours were little at one time as well. We thank you so much to all of those who help make this possible and to say that we have more opportunities for you. If you would like to help once a month in the nursery, please let us know. Sound good? The more people we get on a rotation, the less the people have to be in there, and we all enjoy that. Um, so if you, if you have any questions, you can see Elizabeth, see myself, see, see uh, my wife, Ellen. But we want to um, honor those who help work in the nursery. I know Janine is probably in the nursery right now. Yes, she is. Yeah, she is, isn't she? Mom's always out there, isn't she? She is out there all the time. She loves little ones. It is her ministry. She kind of heads this up for us, and, and we appreciate her. So, so today, when you go out there, be sure to tell her that you appreciate all that she does. We have a certificate for her as well. Um, Zach, he gets out there once in a while. So, Zach, you get a certificate as well. See, guys can do it too, right, guys? Yeah. And, all, and all the ladies said amen to that, right? <laughs> but Diane Norton, she's out there a lot to... Um, Rhonda Bartlett, she's out there for us, so you can come up and grab your certificate as well. Anita Thorne, she's here, I think, somewhere, or is she out there? Oh, she's behind me. She's behind me. Benny is out there, I believe, Sutton. She's, she works a lot as well. Elizabeth, she's out there some as well. Uh, so come grab your certificate and your, and your uh, star. And then I think there's one more on there. Oh, that's for you, dear, because you're out there sometimes as well. So, thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you guys so much for that. It is a ministry, isn't it? If you want to reach mom and dad, one of the best, I'm going to give you a little hint here, and Pastor Harold and Pastor Bob already know this, but if you want to reach mom and dad, you can do it through their kids faster than any way possible. Right? Show their kids love. And that's what we do in the nursery ministry. It is huge. It, it is so important that if we didn't have anybody out there, I would do it. Really, I would. 
and and then y'all can take turns being up here. But it, it is a vital, vital, important part of our ministry that we do here. Be sure to tell those who are out there today, thank you so much. And those who may be out doing other stuff today, when they come back, say, tell them thank you as well. Amen? Are y'all ready to do some more singing? Yeah. What, was you singing loud that last song? Yes. Are you ready to sing louder this next song? Yes. Are we going to sing another song, Brother Mark? We're going to try it. All right, all, let's stand, let, let's sing. That's your name. The mountains shake and crumble. your name the oceans roar and tumble at your name angels will bow the earth will rejoice your people cry out Lord of all the earth will shout your name Shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord. That's your name.
forgive me, but I bounce back to stupidity. But I think of the uh, Lion King where the hyenas are talking about Mustafa, yeah. and they go, Mustafa, <laughs> you know? I'm thinking that's kind of how we ought to be with Christ, right? Every time it's being mentioned, it should give us a good feeling, a, a, a feeling of excite, excitedness, right? That's right. Amen. Sorry, I thought I'd share that with y'all. Whether you wanted it or not. Amen. God, I look to you.
I hope you catch the words and the meaning of, of this song. The news came to Jesus. Please come fast. Lazarus is sick. Without your help, he will not last. Mary and Martha watch their brother die. They waited for Jesus, he did not come. They wondered why. Death watch was over. He said, he'll soon be here. He's on his way. Martha ran to him. And then she cried. Lord, if you had been here, you could have healed him. He'd still be alive. But you're four days late. And all hope is gone. Lord, we don't understand why you waited so long. But his way is God's way, not your mine. And isn't it great when he's four days late? He's still on time. But Jesus said, Martha, show me the grave. But she said, Lord, you don't understand. He's been dead four days. The gravestone was rolled back. Lazarus come forth. That somebody said he's alive. He's alive. So you might be fighting a battle of fear. You've cried to the Lord. I need you now. Don't be discouraged Cause he's still the same He'll soon be here He'll roll back that stone And he'll call out your name
knowing every victory is your power in us. Scars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say, yes, our hearts can say. say amen and go home and know we've been in church. Right? Speaking of church, who's ready for a children's church? Some of you youngins I know are ready to head out there. you got Miss Ellen today. She'll, she'll take care of you. We're going we're gonna to continue talking about our friend Gideon. 
Remember Gideon? We talked about him a little bit last week. Do you, do you remember Gideon? If you, if you remember Gideon, say, I remember. I remember. All right, good. I'm glad you remember. And, and, and we're going to talk about Gideon. And Gideon, remember, we, we, we found him last week. He was literally in a hole in the ground hiding from the enemy, wasn't he? He was hiding. He was threshing wheat. But he had a good reason to hide from the enemy, didn't he? Because he was afraid, number one. Anybody else in, in here ever been afraid in your life? No. Yeah, we've all been, haven't we? I even, I even, I even seen Mark raise his hand, but don't tell nobody. Okay? We're, we, we're all afraid at some point in our life. And, and Gideon, he was afraid of, of the enemy, of the Midianites, because he knew if they saw him threshing wheat, he was getting the kernels, you know, where he could make some some bread or maybe whatever, whatever he wanted to, to use it for. He knew that if they found him, that the enemy would take what he had. Why? Because he could not defend himself against the enemy. Have you ever felt that way before in your life? And, and we know that we learned last week and we decided that fear is a part of life. Fear and phobias are real, aren't they? And it's something that we have to deal with. And, and it's something that we have to, that, that is unfortunately part of our world today. And last week we saw the angel of the Lord come to get him, if you remember it, then as he was hiding in fear from the enemy, wasn't he? And then he was he was cowering in fear. Remember the, the angel of the Lord told, told Gideon what? The told told Gideon said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. We thought, well, well, he sure don't look like a mighty warrior at this point, does he? And he sure didn't act like a mighty warrior, cowering in fear, literally in a hole the ground and that is when we learn this about God that God does not describe us by our current situation amen that God is he is telling us what he can make us into God is not describing getting by his current situation he calls him mighty warrior because God can see the future getting maybe there is some hope for us do you think even when we are fearful and we are frightened and, and, and maybe maybe we, we hear an angel or, or you get that, that sense from God that he is calling you a mighty warrior and you're like, God, I don't mean anything, but remember, God sees the future you. Now, this conversation continues as we're going to talk a little bit about here uh, this morning. We're going to look at Gideon's response because, because God told Gideon, go and save Israel. Go and save Israel. To save the nation from the hand of Midian. And, and Gideon's response was probably similar to what our response would be today because that's a big task, isn't it? Could you imagine God showing up to you and saying, okay, I want you to lead this nation out of bondage. How would that make you feel? Especially if you were hiding in a hole in the ground from the enemy who is the one that God says, to lead your people away from, to take them out under the hand of Midian. So here's what uh, Gideon said. He said, pardon me, my Lord. <laughs> We'd be like, huh? Are you sure? Yeah. He said, pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manassas, and I am the least in my family. How can I do it? Ever said that to God? Hmm. And, and, and Gideon, he, he starts to, his first reaction is to, to explain to the Lord exactly why he is not the guy to lead Israel, to lead the nation out, of, out, out, out from under Midian's hand. He says, well, God, I can't do it, number one. I can't do it. And then number two, you see, God, well, my, my clan is, is the weakest. My, uh, my family is the weakest of all families, and I'm the weak link in my family. That was Gideon's response, wasn't it? Man, I can relate. Anybody else relate? Or just, I'm just preaching to myself this morning. You know, I can relate to Gideon's response here. And he gives him a huge task, and Gideon says, I can't do it. And here's why. I love the Lord's response to Gideon here. I absolutely love this next verse. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. God's response to Gideon is absolutely perfect. Perfect response. It, it, it's God's one-line answer to Gideon. 
I believe it's God's one line answer to everyone that he calls to, to me and to you. And I, I want you to write this down. If you got something to write this down, I want, I want you to write this down because I do not want you to miss this, guys. This, this is God's answer to the I can't do it. When, when God said, I will be with you. I will be with you. Turn to your neighbor and say, God will be with you. Now, 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 now turn to your other neighbor and act like you mean it and say, God will be with you. <laughs> that is God's answer to when he gives you a mission and, he's, and, and, and your first response is, and my first response often is, I can't do it. And here's why. I start listening to examples. I can't do it because, because my family is the weakest family and I'm the weakest link in my family. So there's no way I can do it. And God says, I will be with you. Just let that sink in for a moment. God, the creator of the universe, the one who is able to give missions to those who he chooses, gives you a mission, and he says, I will be with you. That's pretty good. I like that, don't you? So remember, just like we were talking about just a minute ago, God never leaves us alone, does he? He is always, always with us. I'll let that soak in for a minute. Take a deep breath. And realize that God is with you. Amen, church? Amen. That's where the price of mission right there, isn't it? Let, let's, all right, I'm going to continue the story. Are you ready to continue the story? Get in here, Clyde. He says, he says, if now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you. How can I know it's really you, God? Give me a sign. And then, and then he says, do, do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. So Gideon, he gets his offering ready. He goes inside. He prepares a young goat. And from an ephah of flour, he made bread without yeast. Putting the meat in a basket, it, it's brought in a pot. He brought them out and offered to, the, to him under the oak. The angel of, of God said to him, Take the meat and unleavened bread. Place them on this rock and pour out the broth. And Gideon did so. Then the angel of the Lord touched the meat and and the unleavened bread with the tip of the staff that was in his hand. Fire flared up from the rock, consuming the meat and the bread. And the angel of the Lord disappeared. So to summarize all of that right there, what we got here, Gideon wants to know, he wants a sign to know that this really is God, an angel from the Lord, speaking to him. So he prepares an offering, doesn't he? He uses a rock as a makeshift altar, if you will. And, and, and the angel touches the food with the staff. And, 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 and the offering is consumed with flames. And man, what an amazing sight that must have been. And, and then the angel disappears. And after all that, Gideon is convinced. He is convinced that this angel was of God. This angel had to be of God. It must be of God. And then the story continues. And it says this, When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed as he said, Alas, Savior, Sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. So Gideon, he built an altar to, that, to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is peace. And to this day it stands in, the, in, in, it stands in Ophrah of the Abyssalites. That same night, the Lord said to him, Take a second bull from your father's herd, the one seven years old. Tear down, and I'll get this, we'll talk about this in a moment. Tear down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the Asher pole beside it. Then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God on top of this height. Using the wood of the Asher pole that you cut down, offer the second bull as a burnt offering. Now, see what Gideon does. So Gideon, he took ten of his servants and did as the Lord told him. But because he was afraid of his family 
and the townspeople. He did it at night rather than in the daytime. And we see here, do you notice what Gideon does once again? He's fearful of what others are going to say, isn't he? What others are going to do. He's afraid. God gives him a mission and says, okay, first thing you need to do with this, you need to tear down the, the, the idol bell. You need to tear down this year pole. You need to make a proper altar. You, you need to get rid of the idols. And then Gideon, knowing that it was from the Lord, right, because he just said that he knew it was, he's still fearful. So he does this in the cover of night. But you also notice that God does not criticize Gideon for being afraid. So here's another truth that I want you to know, church. I want you to know this. Obedience to follow through with God's instruction is more important to God than being brave and courageous. Amen? Amen. Because God gives us a mission and sometimes we do it and sometimes we're still afraid while we're doing it. Probably, oftentimes, it's probably the answer, isn't it? But do you realize that obedience to God, follow through in what He wants you to do, is more important to God than even being brave or courageous? That's good, isn't it? Aren't you glad of that? Aren't you glad that, 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 that you don't have to be courageous and then God gives you the mission? He gives you a mission and He gives you the courage to go through with it. Sometimes, even when we're still a little afraid, God gives us a way to do it. Because following through on God's will is more important than being brave and courageous to God. I want you to get that. Do you got that, church? If you, if you got it, say got it. Got it. Okay, so remember, the obedience to God is more important than being brave and courageous while we're doing those things that He wants us to do. It's okay to be fearful. It's okay to be afraid. But knowing this is what God wants me to do, I'm going to step out in faith and do it anyway. Why? Because I know He will never leave me nor forsake me. He is always with me. I am never alone. Me and God, here we go. Let's do it. It's not going to listen. I'm still going to be afraid. My knees may be knocking, but let's do it. Amen, church? That's why that's what that, that part of that story tells me. Now we know that later on in verses 36 through 40, you can look at that there in Judges, that 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 Gideon does a famous fleece test. Do you all remember that? Because he said that he wanted a sign from God. He said, give me a sign that you will save Israel by my hand. Gideon was always about, give me a sign for this, give me a sign for that, right? So we know the famous fleece test, don't we? Gideon, he, he says that he will pull, put a wool fleece out. And what he would like, he puts that on the threshing floor there on the ground. And, and he says that, that if the dew in the morning is only on the fleece, but everything else is dry, then I know that you will save Israel by my hand. He gets up in the morning. And what's he do? The fleece is wet, right? He wrings it out and, and, and everything else is dry. And then, and then he kind of says, okay, let's do this one more time, God. <laughs> Ever been there, right? But he says, this time I want the fleece to be dry and everything else to be wet. So what happens? He gets up the next morning and, and it was as he wanted it to be. The ground was wet, right? And the fleece was well, this must be from God. And you know, from this, oftentimes I think that, 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 that this is, we can abuse this passage sometimes. We have to be careful, church, because we come up with some crazy litmus tests, don't we? Come on now, be honest. I'm being transparent, my hand's up too, right? We've all done it in the past, right? God, if this happens today, well, well let's, let's look at this a little bit deeper. I think, I think what, what we need to do is, is, number one, is Gideon needed confirmation, and sometimes we need confirmation too. That's true. Where do we go for our confirmation? Where do we go to know, to decide, is this from God or not? Well, the first thing we should do is we should go to the Scripture. We should go to His Word. Amen? We should seek godly counsel. With one another. Someone you trust. Uh, that, that you can go to them and say, man, I really feel like God has wanted me to do this. Can you see this? Because often others can see something in you that you can't see yourself. Right, church? 
So, so, so the question really becomes, how can we know if God is with us? Read his word. Godly counsel. Godly counsel. Read his word. Maybe if we read his word or if we seek godly counsel, we can figure these things out. Amen? Do you think so, church? I see y'all going like this. That's good. That's good. Our search for confirmation it should come in reading God's word. It should come in seeking godly counsel. No more of this. We don't need to say, well, if I see a deer today, or, you know, well, if the Colts win the game, or heads or tails, no, 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 no. We don't need to do that. We, we can be confident that God is with us without relying on, hand, on chance, chance happenings, right? The Bible tells us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. He, he says, that he, says that, that he will be with us always after Jesus' resurrection. And he was still walking on, on earth after the resurrection and before he ascended into, into heaven. He told us to the disciples, he said, and I will be with you always to the ends of the age. Amen? God will always be with us. And God is saying the same thing to us today, I think. The same thing that he spoke to the disciples. The same thing that he spoke to Gideon. He is telling us, he's telling, he is saying, go mighty warrior, I am with you. He's telling you that today. Even if we're hiding, he's saying, I'm with you, mighty warrior. That's really all we have to grab a hold of, to grab a hold on to. That's where my confidence comes from. That's the only base for my courage in life is knowing that God will never leave me. He will never forsake me. He is with me everywhere I go. He is with you everywhere you go. We should draw courage from that. Amen, church? I believe so. Do not look to your courage to give you identity in Christ. Look to your identity in Christ to give you courage. Amen, church? Let me read that again so you get that. Do not look to your courage to give you identity in Christ. Look to your identity in Christ to give you courage. Jesus, that is where our courage and our strength come from. Remember, like I said earlier, I said last week, and I'm saying it again this week, and, and I hope it sticks up here that, that, that when God comes to you, He does not start with what you are. He oftentimes tells you what He intends to make you through Jesus. That is why He can go to Gideon and call him a mighty warrior when He's hiding from the enemy. We see this throughout the Bible. A couple examples. God, He talks to Moses, doesn't He? And he says, and he tells Moses, you're going to be a great speaker. And Moses is like, bidee, 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 bidee. <laughs> right? You see, you see, God sees the future Moses, not the current one. He, God says, I will be with you. God, he, he tells Abraham that he will be the father of many nations. And, 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 and Abraham kind of said, God, uh, just in case you haven't noticed, I'm old and so is my wife. We're old. Right? Can you relate? <laughs> he, said, he, he said, we're all, and, and, and God said, you're going to be the father of many nations. How can God say it? Because he saw the future, Abraham. He said, and God said, Abraham, I will be with you. God calls unlikely people, doesn't he? Jacob, David, Jonah, Joseph, Paul, any one of the disciples, me, you, God calls unlikely people to do missions for him, doesn't he? Amen. So I guess maybe the question all boils down to this today. Will you believe God when he calls you? Will you believe God when he calls you? When God calls you a mighty warrior because he has a mission for you to do? Are you going to believe it? Maybe God is saying, you need to go talk to this person. You need to go do this. You need, you need to... Volunteer in the nursery. You, you need to, to drive deeper in the local church. You need to really get into this ministry. Are you going to believe God when he calls you? Or will you choose to believe everything else you hear? Because guess what, church? And you all know it as well as I do. We have an enemy, don't we? And that enemy will talk and speaks to us. And the devil usually starts, starts by attempting to, to define you by what you have done. The devil will tell you that you're not enough, that you're a failure, 
that you are rejected. The devil lies to us. He will say, you can't do it, and here's why. But we must remember this, church. We must remember that through Jesus, that you become the warrior that you were meant to be. Through Jesus, you can become a mighty warrior. The devil will feed you lies. The devil is a liar. Amen. God speaks to you differently. God speaks about you differently. God says that you are righteous. If you are a Jesus follower, God says you are a saint. God says you are a mighty warrior. And often our response is, but God, I am none of these. And God replies to us, because of my son, because of Jesus, you can be and you will be. Now Gideon's story it also teaches us a, a, another really good truth that we need to touch on for a moment. And that is that revival starts at home, doesn't it? Did you, did you see the, the Gideon's first assignment? It was to get rid of the idol that was in his father's house. You see, before we do battle with the enemies around us, we need to do battle with the enemies inside of us. We need to get rid of our idols. We, we need to throw them out. Idols weaken us, and they make us ineffective for God's mission. And some people say this, and, and then they say they do not have any idols. And that's good. I hope that you don't. But also I think that maybe sometimes we do not understand what an idol really is. For Gideon's family, the idols were things that they worshipped instead of God. Things that they literally placed on the same plane as God. They worshipped idols in addition to God. They put, they put God here and then and they put a whole bunch of Baal and, and Asherah. Everything that they thought they needed in life, if something could give that to them, they needed rain, they needed crops, they needed fertility, whatever it may be, they would take that God from, from, from the pagan and they would put it even with God of Israel. That's not right, is it? So you see, for Gideon's family, it wasn't really that, that, that they, in their mind, they would say that they did not reject God, but they just added others to it. Sometimes we do that, don't we? I like what, what Tim Keller, I like what his definition of an idol is. This is really good. He says this. An idol is anything more important to you than God. We understand that, right? We get that. On our priority list, whatever's above God, that is an idol, right? And then I like the way he breaks it down. He says, anything that absorbs your heart and imagination more than God. If anything has your heart and your imagination other than God, above God. That is an idol. He says anything you seek to give you what only God can give. If you seek something else that only God can give you, if you seek it through another way, that, my friend, is an idol. He says anything that is so central and essential to your life that should you lose it, your life would feel hardly worth living. That is a great definition of an idol. After reading that, I think maybe we need to do some sincere idol inventory. Because before God uses us for his mission, he has to go to war against our idols because guess what? If it's got to be only God in my life and your life. He's the only one on top. Nothing else. Nothing else. Not even family, not even job, not even material possessions. Nothing. Prestige, nothing. So maybe I can ask this question. What is God talking to you about right now? Is there anything that you need to give over to Him? Maybe it's relationships that you hold above God. Maybe it's hobbies that you hold above God. Maybe it's finances or goals or whatever it may be. Is there anything in your life that is above God that would be considered an idol? Because just as God instructed Gideon, God is asking you and me today to tear down idols, to destroy them, to remove them. So God is the only one left. 
So I want you just to allow the Holy Spirit for just, just a, a brief moment to kind of give an inventory of your life right now. Just, just, just bow your head and then close your eyes right now, if you will. No one looking around. Just ask the Holy Spirit to take inventory of your life. And if there's anything in there that, that you have put even with God, if there's anything in your life that you've put above God, whether it's relationships, whether it's material, whether it's money, whether it's job, whether it's hobby, whether it's finances, whether it's goals, whatever it may be. And if something is above God in your life, that, my friend, is an idol. And just like God instructed Gideon right off the bat to tear down the idols that his father built up, Jesus is telling you today to tear down the idols to where only he is the only one left standing. And then we can do the mission that God has for us. You know, our altar is always open. You can always come and pray if you like. You can pray right at your seat if you like. I just want you to take that inventory today. Because God wants to be the only number one in your life. That's what he deserves. That's what he demands. Nothing else. If you want to come and pray at the altar, please do. Father God, we come to you today, Lord, and we are thinking right now and allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our life. And we thank you for this lesson in, in Judges where, where you told Gideon to tear down the idols that were there. And God, I'm glad that Gideon is a real person and he's just like us because he did it under the cover of night. Probably just like we would have done ourselves. Thank you that we can relate to the people of the Bible. And God, we... we, we, we we think of your instructions and how Gideon, as fearful as he may have been, he followed through on your instructions. Thank you, God, that you tell us that it is more important to obey than it is to be courageous and brave. Because sometimes it's all we can do to obey. And God, we want to obey and making sure that there are no idols in our life. No matter what it may be, God, we want you to be number one in all areas of our life, in, in, in our finances, in our family, in our relationships, God, in, in our job, in our career, in our goals, Lord, our hobbies, whatever it is that we do. May we tear down any idol that is in our life right now, God. And may we offer ourselves to you and to you only. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to do that, God. Thank you for the story that you have given us, this true event in the Bible that we can learn from even today, God. We, we, we are thankful for the one who had come up here, God, and, and there may be others praying in, in their seats right now. We pray that they are, Lord. But we are praying that, that walls are being torn down, God, that the idols are being torn down, that you are being lifted up. All over this house, God, whether they're in this room, whether they're watching online, Lord, we thankful that and we thank you that we can make you number one in our life. And you will take that spot in our life. And, 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 and you will give us missions that, that oftentimes we are like, there's no way I can do that. And we are so thankful that you say, I will be with you. And it is because of that we can gain strength and courage. 
Thank you, Jesus, for working today. Thank you for tearing down idols for us today, God. It's in Jesus' name. Know God, He took an unsure Gideon, didn't He? Hiding, <laughs> cowering in fear. And, and He made him into a military leader. He really did. A, a judge and a prophet whose victory over the, the Midianites brought Israel out of oppression. And you've got homework today. Oh no, you say. It's good homework. If you haven't already, you need to read Judges chapter 7 and 8 because it tells the story of Gideon, how, how he had too many guys. And God whittled down his army to 300. And Gideon with 300 took out the Midianites who were at least 135,000 strong. Amen, church? Why? Because God says, I'm with you, mighty warrior. God was with Gideon. We can see that, can't we? Guess what, church? God is with us, too. He's with you. He's with me. We have no reason to fear, even though we will oftentimes face fear. I think that we can be the people that God wants us to be, that God has called us to be. I think that we can be the people that our families need us to be. We can be the leaders that this church needs us to be. Amen? So I say this. No longer are we hiding, going to hide away. It is time for us to stand, isn't it? It's time for us to take the sword, if you will, right? And we can lift it up. And we can say, God is with us. And with God, He will make us mighty warriors. Amen, church? So there's a couple of things I want you to do as, as we leave today. Number one, very carefully, you can come up here and I want you to take, take, take a picture with this sword. And you can post it if you want. And you can put it on Facebook. And you can say this. You can say, you can say, the Lord is with me, therefore I am a mighty warrior. Yeah. Amen? You can do that today if you like. And second of all, as we go to the back, we want to make sure that we get a picture of all the all the nursery workers because we because we uh, honor them today. And some of y'all still got your stuff up there because you were back in the nursery with we were done. We want to take a picture of all of our nursery workers back there today before our chili cook-off. But remember this, church. God loves you. God sees you. God hears you. And God is with you. Amen? Amen. We love you. We are here to walk this journey with you. So I want you to go be Jesus to someone this week. And maybe you'll have to get your sword out and say, okay, Lord, you are with me. Therefore, I am a mighty warrior. And let's take that step forward in that mission that he has for us. Amen, church? Amen. God bless you. We love you. You're the Yes, absolutely. Jesus made such a huge price. Janine drove me. Yeah. And we had to leave at 6 a.m. And it was raining. Of course, it was dark outside. Yep. And we went through uh, rush hour traffic. And Janine did a great job. God was with us that whole day. Amen. Good. good and you survive rush hour traffic is not fun on 465 it is we've all probably been there well good I'm glad thank you for that, for that good report anybody else got a praise this morning we do not want to kill anybody short thank God for answered prayers this week yes. if you didn't know my husband was back in the hospital this week Absolutely. Any other? It's always a good to share the praises of God. Amen? Yes. Amen? Pastor? Yes? Keep my uh, cousin Logan in yeah. prayer. He had like some of you know, he had a bad dirt bike wreck, and he, all the minor and major injuries that he has, luckily he has to go through no surgeries. Good. As they know for now, no surgeries. Good. 
His name is say Logan. Logan. Logan, remember Logan in your prayers. Amen. Yeah. Anybody hungry? Y'all ready for a chili cook off? Yeah. Now remember, when we go back here, we're going to get to all, all the nursery workers together, so be sure to grab your certificate if you don't already have it. And we're going to take a picture back there. Maybe we'll even go to the nursery with you, right? And then we'll take a picture back there. So that will be on Facebook. Amen? Amen. Because we love our volunteers here. God bless the church.